Now let's take a look at working with the 3D viewer. So again, it's going to depend on the files and the file type or the objects that you're looking at is to maybe what viewer you're working in and what results you get. So if we were to look at that same file that we had before in a 2D viewer, or sorry, that we were looking at in the 2D viewer in the 3D viewer, you'll see we can still open it up. It's a, in this case, it's a drawing. You'll notice that it opened up in a separate tab in this particular instance. And it basically allows me to look at this in 3D. Now, looking at it in 3D probably doesn't really give me much of an advantage because this particular drawing is, is flat, right? The objects are flat, there's no elevation to them. However, you can still come in and measure and, and do markups and use this as a tool to uh, you know, communicate changes or review the drawing in, in more of a 3D environment. You know, some of the advantages in this case, you'll see if I was to use the perpendicular uh, measurement tool here, right? then you can see that it's actually snapping to some of these objects. So if I was to come up here and, and snap to the objects and click, you know, the end of that object there, then you'll see that it's, you know, 3599 or 36 feet and I didn't have to calibrate it. So the other problem with that is when you're done is that if you select, you know, some of these objects, you'll see that it's selecting everything and it doesn't really let you drill down into those uh, you know, individual components in this particular example. It's really the way that the drawing is set up. So I'm going to close this and we're going to look at a different project or a different drawing within this project or in this case actually a model. So I'm going to go to Explorer and I am going to look at these VCL models. So I'm going to click in here. I'm going to click this and you'll notice that it says, you know, uh, view in 3D viewer. If I just click on it in this case, you'll see that it's going to open it up in a 3D viewer and it's going to keep me within that, that same tab. And you use the back button to go back to your, your project and your, you know, your project data. So again, I'm just going to click on this one because it's a TRB file. It automatically wants to open it up in a 3D viewer versus the CAD file or an image would open up in a 2D viewer. All right, so now that we have that here, I can come in and you know kind of the same thing i can use this perpendicular measurement tool and i can measure between here and here all right so again it's 32 feet there uh, but i was going not from face a curb to face a curb if back a curb to back a curb you know it's 36. so uh, when you're done you click done and that will measurement will stay now you can delete the measurement by selecting it and picking delete and it will, uh, or the trash can, and it will delete those objects. So similar to the 2D view, uh, 2D viewer, uh, you have some panning and zooming. In this case, the wheel mouse lets you zoom in and out. You'll notice down here, there's a little gizmo. And if I click on these buttons, I can change the orientation. So that's looking at it in a uh, profile view where the Z is up. If I click the Z, it changes it so the Z is pointing towards me. Y is up, X is to the right. And I can you know, rotate that around just by clicking on these little icons in this gizmo. So now I've got it in a plan view. You can turn layers on and off. So if I click the uh, layer button below the model, I could come in here and I could turn off the surfaces. So you can see by turning off that surface, it will remove these, uh, uh, the surface within that, that particular project, right? So if I zoom up, you can see I got some 2D line work and some 3D line work. So if I remove the surface, I can see my pipes that are below the surface in that case. So I can turn that back on. Um, you have an area selection mode. So if I was to do this, let me turn those off and select, it selects everything within that window. If I just use this uh, arrow single selection, I can pick on that object. And let's pick the pipe here. And if I go to the properties panel, I can see that it's utility line it's uh, a storm pipe 
if I actually look at the properties of it, it shows the name that's coming from that model that was exported out. It shows what type of pipe it was. Uh, and it actually shows the length. So you can see there's some information. In this case, it even shows the start invert and the ending invert. So the attribute information about that pipe is also visible by looking at the properties. And this is why it's a little bit nicer to look at the data in a model view versus just a 2D CAD file because you can drill down into the information. I can pick on, let's say, the building outline, and we can look at the properties there. So same thing, it's a CAD polyline, but it's gonna show me the minimum elevation as well as the area. So I'm getting the area of the building pad um, by looking at the objects, the individual objects here. And that's just a matter of selecting the object. This is a, uh, an assembly selection. We don't really have any assemblies in here, so can't show that one. Uh, this is the multi-select mode. So what this allows you to do is actually pick multiple objects. So if I pick both of these, you can see that I'm selecting multiple objects just by left clicking. Another method, in if you toggle it, they'll go off. Now the other method to do that is you can also use your shift key. If you hold your, your shift key down, and pick objects, you're also doing the multi-select, but requires you to do the uh, uh, shift key. Uh, just left click to get out of that. We have our dimension tools. We have a perpendicular measurement tool, a single point angle, and you can delete the measurements here. So if I use the perpendicular measurement tool, and if I wanted to, I could come in here and let's zoom in on these pipes you can see that I've got a, these pipes are touching. Um, so I could go from center to center and I got a foot and a half um, between the two. So, you know, this, you know, we obviously can see by visually looking at it that there's a clash, but we also have a clash tool that we can run on these to determine if they actually do uh, intersect. And um, I can, sh we'll show you that in another video. But you've got the tools here that you can measure. So I can measure from here to here. It's snapping to the objects. Um, so it, it is measuring in 3D. So I can measure perpendicular, you know, uh, from a higher level to a, a lower level. Again, you can change the color. You can snap the points, you can snap the lines, you can snap the faces and snap to center. So you got some toggles up here that let you snap to certain objects. You have the same ability to add and create a view like we showed you before. And then you can delete all the measurements by doing that. Now some of the other measurement tools is the single point. So I could come in here and I could click on that building pad and it's going to give me the X, Y and the Z elevation of that particular point. I can come over here and change that to a different color. And let's say we hit the top of this rim. It's going to set that rim, tell us what that rim elevation is. And then we got the angle measurement tool. So this, you pick the vertex first and you pick one point and the other, and you'll see that it gives you the angle between those two lines. So I do it the same thing. I'll pick here. I pick that point and that point, you'll see it gives me that angle between those two points. When you're done, same thing, you can delete all measurements, get rid of them all. Okay. You got your cloud markup tools like we had before. Um, there's a text markup with an arrow. So again, these are a little bit different than the 2D mode, but you can come in here and let's say with the building pad, you can go over there and say, you know, building, put in other uh, text. When you're done, just click done. This, uh, you can set a clipping plane and delete the clipping plane. So if you wanted to uh, pick a, an area to clip,
we don't really have a 3D model to show the clipping plane, so we're just going to ignore that one for now. You have the add view. So you have the, these clipping planes as well. Um, we don't really have a, a model here to really demonstrate that. So just know that if you got like a more of a 3D model, like a building structure, you can add these, these clipping planes. Um, you can do a vertical clipping plane or uh, a just a, a horizontal one, but we're gonna skip that one for now. You can add the view like we talked about before. You can add a to-do. So you can come in here and say, you know, this is a priority high, critical, low, um, the date it's due, and assign it to a particular project uh, team member. These here are just more view. You can toggle a orthometric or perspective view. You can change the view, just like using the gizmo down here, but here's where you can go front view. You can do a top view. So using those to get you where you want. These over here let you kind of display and show all objects um, and or hide the objects you can also if you hide an object then you're able to toggle it on temporarily it's like a ghost mode so you're able to find the objects that are hidden um, this one here is your visibility control so you can see your you know what's visible are your different planes your elements uh, we don't have any I ifc elements in here but we could turn those on and then your model transparency. So let me turn on this finished ground surface and you'll be able to see this one here is I can change the transparency of that, that surface so that I can see the objects below. So if you've got multiple objects, you can change uh, their transparency. This resets the model, puts it all back to the way it was, kind of turns everything back on. You've got your show height instruction. So you'll notice it when you pick on something you know, like these clipping planes, um, it will come out with a, uh, a little tool tip. So for example, let me get out of that one for a second. If I turn that on, you can see that it brings out that little tool tip there. All right, so uh, it's handy. You can turn that on and off. Then you've got your settings. This is where you can come in and change your units if you needed to, your display precision uh, for the different objects. And then you've got some extensions as well down below, right? Which we're not using right now, but we'll, you know, these are more features that you can uh, to use in, in your collaboration. And then this centers the full screen, just like in the 2D view. So pretty much the same, um, a little bit, over here, you've got attachments, you got some other commands, you got your to do's and your views again. You've got your organizer where you can uh, organize the project. And then this one here is kind of neat where it's actually looking at the data table. So it's showing you what, you know, how many line strings you have, what their total area is. And if you go down and you happen to, let's say, like this line string. And you got one line string here and you can see that, you know, they're the different areas. So it kind of gives you a breakdown of all of them. You really want to know what object you're looking at. So you'd have to know which one it was picking up. And you can save this to the organizer. You can select objects. So like that utility line, if I navigate down into the utility line and that line is selected and I pick select, you'll see it picks up that utility line. So that's how you get and see that data that's up there. You can colorize groups as well. So a lot of different things you can do in here by using these tools. So if we turn off that 
Let's go back to layers here and turn off that finished design. And these other surfaces, those are subgrade surfaces. By selecting that one object, you can see down here, you can add an attachment. So you can add a to-do or other attachment type. So in this case, it, you know, uh, getting a warning here, it can ensure the object attachments, custom properties will work as expected. So you can see that, you know, maybe I connect out to a hyperlink in a web URL. So maybe this is a particular pipe that has to be sourced from a certain manufacturer and you could create a link to that manufacturer's website in here as well, you know, as an, as an example. You can change the color um, and the transparency of this particular object. So just by selecting the object, you're changing and adjusting it. Now, if I pink that orange, you can see that I've changed the color of that one. And, you know, maybe that's going to indicate a, a particular item that needs to be fixed or resolved. And then you can uh, show only selected objects. So it turns everything off except the object that I selected. So if I want just this pipe, I get just that pipe. And I can isolate that object that way. And you can hide it as well. If I go to change visibility, I can isolate, unisolate, and show all hidden objects. So that's very similar to what you're doing up here with these tools. So that's kind of an overview of the 3D viewer and what you can do and the features and tools that are available within the 3D view. The next one we'll take a look at is the CAD viewer and see what options we have with our models in, in that 3D viewer. One last thing before we go um, on this, if you want to look at multiple objects, so what I could do is... Um, Let's say we go to that pipe network. I've got two XML files here. So if I pick this site storm and this water line, by clicking the check boxes, you'll see when you pick more than one, it's gonna open it up in a 3D viewer. Now, if I go back to Explorer, those two are still selected. So that's why you see over here two selected items. I can then come over to the drawings. And if I was to pick, let's say this uh, CAD line work and then go to the 3D viewer it's going to combine all three of those models within this one view so you can see the 2D view and then the pipes which are separate models are displayed all together combined and as long as they all have the same XY coordinate systems they should all overlay appropriately so now I can come in and uh, you can see these, I can drill down into the pipe networks. I can look at the pipes. There's that waterline pipe. And again, I can look at the properties of that particular object. So in the 3D viewer, if you want to see more than one, you select them individually. Now there is a method to look at the entire project in a 3D view. So if you're on the Explorer and you're at the well, kind of the root level, you can go over to the ellipse button over here and view the project in a 3D viewer. And you can see that it's going to open up a new tab and every item within your model is listed here. So then it would just be a matter of turning on the models that you want to see. So this is one way to look at everything in one 3D view. So we'll take a look at the CAD viewer uh, in the following video.